I published this book just last month with a colleague, Jobst Landgraber, who owns an AI company in Germany. Uh, he's a mathematician, amongst other things, and he has been striving for many years to make AI work in a number of different areas. And he did succeed, uh, but in the process, he learned a lot of lessons about where AI will not work. And um, he's now uh, going around the world talking to companies who are um, being offered all kinds of opportunities that AI is supposed to bring, telling them that AI will not bring many of those opportunities for mathematical reasons. And I'm going to apply one simple lesson from the book to the case of digital twins. So the, uh, the, the uh, summary of the book is that AI succeeds in certain narrow areas, but wherever we're dealing with complex systems, uh, for instance, human conversation, em emulation, or stock market prediction, then the AI will fail. And uh, so, and the reason is model-induced escape. So let's suppose you have an AI algorithm which will help you get rich buying and selling stock. Then if you're successful, other market participants will exploit the information that you generate in order to make you fail. Uh, that's model-induced escape. The model itself creates the reasons for the model failing. Uh, something similar happens with spam filters. If you have a really good spam filter, filter, then the authors of spam will use that spam filter in order to create new and wonderful kinds of spam and thereby render your spam filter uh, no longer operative. So this has a, con a, con a consequence for digital twins, um, particularly where digital twins are designed to reflect the patterns of behavior on the part of people. This would apply also in other areas too. Um, so the idea is that the very existence of a digital twin operating in relation to people's behavior patterns will lead to changes in those behavior patterns. It will lead to a change in the system. There will now be a digital twin inside that system. And so the digital twin will no longer be accurate because the digital twin does not accommodate this new feature of the system, which it's supposed to be a model of, namely that the digital twin itself is part of the system. Now, this is a very beautiful uh, example of model-induced escape. Every digital sin, twin, uh, which reflects people's behavior at least, must always be no longer a twin as soon as it's installed. Um, but now there are more uh, uh, substantial ways in, the, in which the digital twin will change behavior patterns. So there, there will be some who react to the knowledge that they are being monitored by a digital twin by protesting that their behavior is being monitored and thereby changing their behavior, perhaps in such a way as to deliberately undermine the digital twin. And these kinds of attitudes are nicely summarized in this book already from 1999. Now, there is a, a nice paper about all of these problems, uh, which uh, I recommend people who are interested in digital twins should read. Uh, that he's particularly interested in those cases where digital twins will allow prediction of the future and implement optimal control of, for instance, people's behavior. And he agrees with me that those, in those cases, digital twins will likely fail uh, for, for the reason that they're using AI and the AI will likely fail for uh, the reasons which I've explained. But digital twins will work where we're dealing with infrastructures, and these are his words now, and geographies which change very little over time. And for instance, in production plants or aircraft engines and so forth. And the final chapter of the book describes those cases where AI will work. And they are pretty much the same sorts of cases as the cases where digital twins will work. So we believe that there, there is still a huge opportunity for AI and indeed for digital twin technology, but it will not do any of the marvelous, wondrous things that uh, uh, some people imagine it will. Uh, all right, now.
the, the many people think that these problems can be solved if we can just collect enough data. And the main thesis of the book, the central chapters, which are quite mathematical in nature, uh, we, we think they demonstrate that however much data you have, you still could not create algorithms with the sorts of predictive powers which would be needed to engineer an AI which would work in any complex system domain. That means weather, climate, geo, uh, seismic, as well as human behavior, animal behavior, bird behavior. So we will never have an AI system which can emulate the behavior of a parrot, for instance, or a rat, perhaps even a bacterium. Uh, and therefore, there will be problems with digital rivers and other climate and environment based digital twin models uh, that people are developing. So these are the examples of complex systems where digital twins won't work. And um, the, the simple systems have all of these mathematical properties. So they have a fixed uh, the solar system is the, uh, the best example. They have a fixed set of element types, a fixed set of interaction types, gravity in this case. There is one relevant force, again, gravity. Um, all processes are time reversal. That means we have ergodic phase spaces. And that is the crucial part of the book. AI will not work if you have non-ergodic phase spaces because you will never collect representative sampling data to, to train your neural network if you do not have an ergodic phase space because no subset of the data is representative of the whole space. That's what ergodicity means. Uh, I don't need to say any more, I think. So simple systems have these properties. Complex systems don't have those properties. They have new element types. For instance, adults are born, dictators arise. Um, uh, people start to hate digital twins. Uh, all of these are changes in the complex system which will affect the predictive power of the complex system. Uh, so complex systems are subject to continuous evolution. This is true of the stock market. It's true of traffic patterns in large cities, and it's true in the, the weather. So these are some examples, and these are the seven properties, and these are the, uh, uh, the, the cases where these properties are satisfied or not satisfied, and I'll leave you with that.